It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with Boxraw out here in Edinburgh. Uh, Eddie, you made it happen. Yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? I mean, it's like, I don't think we've had anything like this for a while. We've had massive fights. We've had massive international fights. Big names, Vegas, Guadalajara, Saudi Arabia. But just this feels like Frampton Quig, Frotch Groves, Hey Bellew, you know, where we're doing multi-city press tours, like packed in here today. And of course, the rivalry. Hate runs deep. I, I've had a couple of good people. You know, do you think hate's this strong word? Mate, it's the perfect word. Let's be honest. They hate each other. That's why it's taken two years to make this rematch. April 27th, I can't wait. I think you're right about the hate because I asked them both if they'd be friends at the end of this and they both said no. Um, but, you know, before we get to the fight, you know, let's talk about the business side of it. I know you said initially it wasn't a big enough fight to be on pay-per-view because they both wanted it in pay-per-view. Just spoke to Josh and he's saying, before you were saying it wasn't a big fight and now you're saying it is. So what changed? No, I never said it wasn't a big fight. I just said that I feel like with all the pay-per-views going on right now, with Joshua and Agarnu, with Fury Usyk, you know, you've got Haney Garcia coming up on the zone in America. We... Not, it's not pay-per-view, it's not pay-per-view on the zone. Because as I said, when we went to the zone, the plan was to take the events that were pay-per-view and put them as part of your subscription. That is massive for us. Now listen, when we moved to the zone, all of a sudden, the market value went up for fighters. Everybody started paying more money. And what happened in the end was, the amount of money that Josh Taylor and Jack Catchell wanted for this fight was very difficult not to do it on pay-per-view to deliver those numbers. So I said to Sam Jones, look, why don't you go out and speak to other people and find out who wants to do it? Sky came in with a massive offer to do it on pay-per-view and DAZN stepped up and paid the money to not put it on pay-per-view. So thank you to them, because as I said, when I joined DAZN, this is exactly the kind of fire that should be part of your subscription. And that's a, a, a buzz. And again, when you talk about the fights coming up on the zone, Fury against Usyk, AJ against Ngannou, Haney against Garcia, you know, throw that in with the rest of the schedule upcoming. Smith against Zapita, Belanger against McCrory this week. Um, you know, so much more to come. Katie Taylor coming up, Lee Wood coming up. Like, this is a massive fight for us. And this just feels, the timing of this fight feels perfect for British boxing because there is a lot of talk at the moment about big fights going to Saudi. And Saudi have done an amazing job. And without Saudi, we wouldn't be getting the kind of fights we're seeing. But we've got to maintain our position in British boxing. We've got to make the mega fights that deliver confrontation, that deliver debate, deliver a packed arena, and, and deliver column inches in national newspapers. And that's what we've got here. Yeah, you know, just uh, touching on that, uh, the whole Sky thing. So at what point does it get to the point where you're like, you know what? We're, we're, we're going to pay that figure that you want. Zone. Really, you know, I said to zone, I want you to do this fight on non-pay-per-view. And, you know, this is how it works. They say, how much is it going to cost us? And I say this much. And they go, oh, well, I don't know. Does the business make sense of that fight? I said, well, you know, we're going to have to allow them to do the fight elsewhere. But let's hold our position that you get a final say to put the money up. And they went out, everybody else, there's multiple broadcasters actually wanted to do the fight on pay-per-view. And I went back to the zone and said, look, they've got, they've got these offers. Do you want to pay or not? And they went, yes, we will. We feel like this is the kind of fight we need to deliver for our subscribers, non-pay-per-view. And I think, great, look, because you know everybody else wanted to put it on pay-per-view. Now you don't have to pay pay-per-view for this fight. So, you know, it's worked out fantastically well. The fans are going to reap the, uh, the joys of that. Uh, Sam Jones uh, touched on it quite heavily, saying that he paid an instrumental part in getting the fight as the biggest payday. He said it was uh, he got Josh the payday. You asked it, Josh that. Uh, mm, no, he said his solicitor paid more of a yeah. part in it. But what's your version of it? Sam done a great job, and this Sam drove everybody mental, right? Me included. Um, but he pushed so hard for Jack in this fight. Without Sam, I don't think this fight would have got made, honestly. Um, so he deserves a lot of credit. Tom Grant level head done a great job and then at us obviously top ranks on espn in america as well um i don't really care who made the fight it's on and, and we should be buzzing about it so we chose leads uh are we expecting a sellout and also tell us a little bit about the plans for the undercard i know mcgrill's having his rematch but what else can we see in the undercard so leads you know we we looked at the availability april 27th was always going to be the date that the zone wanted it on 
Um, Leeds has been incredible over the years in terms of providing the atmosphere, but it's also been filled with Josh Warrington fans. Jack Catterall will sell himself around 3,000, 3,500, just out of hand. You've got a lot of Scots coming down, plus you've got the casuals who want to see this fight, especially after today. Plus you've got the undercard ticket sellers. So you can get up to 12,000 in that arena, and I believe we'll do the lot. Um, and just a quick mention on um, just work ethics. I've seen in the last few days, obviously you're flying from Mexico to here to this presser. We've seen Frank Warren in uh, recent times from, with ill health, but he's still like busy as anything. We've seen uh, His Excellency Turki Al Sheikh who's mentioned that he's delayed some uh, urgent hospital treatment to just to make the fights. Just a word on you guys, kind of like just working through anything to make fights. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that my health, such wood, is in good shape at the moment. But that's why I train like I do, because I think if I didn't, looking at some pictures of me from two years ago, honestly wouldn't. I think I was just an accident waiting to happen. And listen, you never know what God's plan is. I could fly home tonight and unfortunately have a heart attack and pass away. And that's why you got to live every life to the fullest. It's so easy to say that, but so easy not to do it. And I've got plenty I need to improve on. Like one of my biggest faults is I'm a procrastinator, right? What does that mean? It means that you say, I'll do it tomorrow on a lot of things because I have so much happening in my life but I'm really trying to improve many areas of my traits and personalities. And one of them is still, I'm still a procrastinator. Um, but one thing I have is an unbelievable drive and work ethic. And all those people you mentioned, but it, it has to be in you, but it has to be in your heart driven by something that you love. Do you know what I'm saying? So for me, if it wasn't boxing, I don't know whether I could bring that same energy. I love boxing. I love what I do. The business, which is a business built my, by my father, means everything to me. Some people don't understand it. And some people don't understand. You know, a lot of people will say to me, you know, if you feel like you're doing too much, you should, you know. It's hard to explain. Do you know what I mean? But the, the business is everything to me. What my father built, I have an obligation to carry on. My competitive instinct makes me want to outperform him. I just want to win, but I just, I just love boxing. It's an addiction. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Winning's an addiction. Um, it's, it's difficult to say, like, when you when you look at the greats, and I'm not saying, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm probably a great in what I do. I, I know that sound, makes me sound like a knob, but it is actually true. When you look at people, they're not always the full ticket like you look at some of the greats in sport look at ronnie ronnie o'sullivan greatest snooker player to ever live he has character flaws yeah any genius in their field has flaws and it's a very lonely world just pushing 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 and it's very difficult to explain and it's definitely a concern because some people say, well, you're not enjoying your life. You're not getting the time to do this. You know, you're on the road all the time. You get limited time with your kids. You got, but it's like, it's a, addiction's a good word. It's an addiction to win. And it's just, I can't, you know, and now where I'm getting fitter and I'm getting stronger, my engine is getting bigger and more powerful. I've got more energy than I've ever had. All right, mate, I'll see you tomorrow, yeah? Yeah, okay, mate. Yeah, yeah, I got them. Well done, mate, well done. Take care, see you in a bit. Yeah, and I just, I just feel like I could just go and go and go and go. But it's very difficult to explain. So some people were like, if you under, you know, if, if I was talking to a fighter and they're thinking I'm mad, imagine how much you want it. Imagine how much you want legacy in your sport. I feel exactly the same way. So right now, while I'm healthy, I'm going to push and push and push. But I need to, at some point, pull the plug. Not, I ain't going to be Warren or Aram, or my old man. I need to pull the plug at some point and go, time for me to go. Thank you so much, everybody. It's been amazing. I'm now going to go and do something different with my life. Not yet, though. I think people who are striving to be the best will probably understand that. I just want to get a couple of quick updates on Billy Joe Saunders. 
uh, and the whole Kell Brook scenario because it appears Kell's speaking to Boxer about or Wasserman about Eubank and potentially speaking to you about uh, Conor Ben. Uh, but Billy Joe Saunders first. Yeah, Billy Joe. You know, there's um, there is a feeling. What one of the well, talk about flaws? One of the flaws that fighters have is I can't train properly till I've got my date. I hate that, right? But I get it. So it's a bit of cat and mouse with Billy where he wants a date, but I don't want to give him a date till I know he's for real. Do you know what I mean? So we got to get the timing right where he's in good enough shape to start a camp so that I know that when we've got 10 weeks, Billy Joe will be there, he will be on weight and he will perform. So we're speaking to Tom and the team. I want Billy to come back and I'd love him to come back with us. But we've got to, you know, it's not camp starts when, it's camp starts now. Do you know what I mean? And I want to see him back. I think, you know, you see things like this today, British boxing. Billy's a great addition to the sport. He can still win world titles. So hopefully we see him, you know, in the summer of this year. Regarding Kel Brook, looks in great shape, which tells me I'm not in any negotiations with him for the Conor Ben fight yet till we see what's happening with Conor in the UK. But the fact that he's in the shape he's in, leads me to believe he's got something coming or he's at least talking. And I understand they're talking about a Eubank fight, so we'll see. So, Briel Matias, I think a couple of years ago, if I asked you about him, I'm pretty sure your answer would have been, he doesn't speak English, he's not marketable. What's changed? Why is Eddie Ian signing up all these top Americans? Because he's a world champion. He's one of the most dangerous motherfuckers I've ever met in my life. Pound for pound, one of the most exciting fighters in probably the best and most exciting division in the sport. So, obviously, now with our American arm, we can go over... We can be in um, Puerto Rico. We can be in America with him. He will be in some massive fights. And I'll put him in any fight and believe he has a great chance of winning it. Last question, Adam Azim, Dalton Smith. I think Ben Chalom suggested that he wants to fight on Sky. Is it going to be, are you guys going to talk outside the Perspid situation? We'll make it really easy for you. We'll do the fight on Sky. No problem. Make us an offer. You ain't going to make us an offer. What you're going to do very soon is pull Adam Azim out of that fight. Remember where you heard it first? You heard it from me, the main man. They're going to pull Adam Azim out of the Dalton Smith fight, and I'll give you no excuses. We will do the fight on Sky Sports. Just make him an offer, and I'll top the money up if you want. No problem. At the end, thank you. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals. 